welcome to our 12 o'clock uh, Sunday class for, you know, chess people. Just yeah, if we can call them people. Uh, at home, unclear. Uh, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold, and you're not. And you got to be at least 45 years old to get that joke. Although even then, it's unclear. Yeah. yeah. Well, how uh, old are you, Benny? <laughs> at least. Old yeah. enough. You, ha you have to watch SNL in the 70s to get it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's tough to get that joke. Okay, so um, as you all know, uh, I played in a tournament yesterday. Um, and I was victorious. Uh, the average rating of my opponents was lower than yours, and that's impossible. So that's pretty insane, stuff, right? You agree? What? See, yeah, he agrees. How old are you? I'm nine. You sure? Yeah. I nice. Don't look like nine. What? I don't look like nine. What? What do you look like? So eight, I think. Yeah. You look eight? Yeah, but I'm nine. Man, they told me. So how old are you, Alex? Seven. Plus tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm all. Uh, see, you're seven and you're nine, but I'm eight. Forty-eight. Close. Okay, so uh, we'll start over for you. I played in a tournament here yesterday, and we're going to look at one of my games, and then we're going to look at a puzzle. The puzzle is so hard, nobody's ever solved it. Okay, even though it's Not even the best slightly, the slightly easier than that. Okay, so normally what I do before class, which you guys know at home, and you here, although now you've never been here before. Have you been here before? No. Uh, he hasn't either. Okay. And... I talk about certain ideas, like play in the center, which is the name of one of our tournaments. Take your opponent's pieces, kick your opponent if they're beating you, right? Stuff like that. Today we're going to talk about a lot of stuff because we're going to go over every move and explain it. And this game didn't last very long. Now this was a very strange game because my opponent never played in a tournament before. So they figure like, okay, he's not going to do very well. And not only did he do well, he beat everybody, and I beat him, and he came in second. So his first rating ever is 21.95. Very suspicious. And uh, he said he plays chess on the internet, and his chess.com rating is 1,500. Against me, he played like 700 strength. But against everybody else, he must have played like 2,200 strength. I don't know. Maybe he was nervous. Okay, so we'll explain the game. Don't blink, because it doesn't last very long. Okay, unlike the lecture. Okay, now this is very strange because normally when I play in a tournament where I'm a thousand points higher than my opponents, I do whatever I want. I just play random opening moves. They get confused. They start crying. I bring Kleenex and I win. But here I just played my normal stuff. D4, that's what I usually do. Okay, my opponent played D5, classical chess. Anybody ever had this position before? Look familiar? Yeah, okay. Now I played C4. Now I'm going to talk about this move for an hour. Do you know why? Why? I get paid by the hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now C4, what's the name of that opening? You. I forgot its name, but I know what it means. All right. That's close enough. Queen How about Gambit. you? You. Queen Gambit. The Queen's Gambit. Also a book by Walter Tevis. Right? Is that your favorite book? No, it's not a chess right. book. It's not a chess book. Okay. So the idea of C4 is eventually to trade a side pawn for a center pawn. And actually, we have another opening like this, which is more dangerous, called the King's Gambit. Okay, the King's Gambit, which you also heard of, but couldn't remember the name, is this. And we have the same idea. We want to get rid of this pawn, so it's gone, like that. See, that was easy. Then when it's gone, we can play d4. In fact, in this position, if I could move again, I would play d4, right? But that's why e5 and c5 are the most common moves. That when they play d4, you take it. So then people don't play d4. And this is the same thing here, except I'm not getting checkmated. See, this isn't like getting my king in trouble. That's actually my queen. If it was the king's gambit, then my king could get in trouble. So the queen's gambit is actually very common. Now, there's three moves that grandmasters play here with black. If you play all three of them, then you're doing well but you can only play one, right? Okay, so somebody raise their hand and tell me one of the three moves. What does black play here usually? You. Uh, mostly the black takes on C4. Taking on C4 is called the Queen's Gambit Accepted. That's a move. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else is a move? What else? You. Um, Same guy. Move the guy to um, E3 somewhere? E4? Move the guy to E3? What guy? The pawn. 
Uh, no pawn can go to e3 or e4. There's no legal move like that. The, the black piece will have to go quite the far yeah. away. That's right. Black. If yeah. black went to e3, that would be cheating. And e4. I said the white pawn. You can't move the white pawn. It's black's turn. It's black's oh. turn. Yeah. If you can move the white pawn, I would do that. That's what I would do. Okay. Anybody? You in the back. E6, pawn E6. E6, the queen's gambit declined. And does anybody know what the Slav is? Slav? Which move is the Slav? No, nothing? C6. C6. Okay. C6 defends the pawn. E6 defends the pawn and takes, takes the pawn. And when you take the pawn, white tries to win his pawn back and builds a big center. Uh, some grandmasters take and some don't. Some actually take and don't take. One game they take, the next game they don't. Then you're like, hmm, I don't know what he's going to do. Okay, my opponent played c6. But actually, my opponent played c6 and e6. He showed me. He just played e6 later. This is the Slav. I actually play this with black. Okay, we developed our knights because we're really good, right? Mm. Okay, and then I developed my other knight. Now, in this position, grandmasters play three different moves. They take, which is what I usually do. That's the Slav. They play e6, which is the semi-Slav. And they play a6, which is relatively new. Okay, my opponent played e6. Okay, so he's got the triangle formation. So when the game ended, he went and played for the Lakers. Right? That's why he lost the game. He was used to losing. No, anybody? You guys get that at home? Yeah. Okay, I'm so old, I remember when the Lakers were good. Yeah, that's how old I am. And he's like, what? Never heard of the Lakers, right? You heard of them? No. Exactly. It's yeah. A they're a basketball team, and they're terrible, but they used to be good. They're actually famous for being good. Now they're not good. Why aren't they good? Yeah, exactly. We could talk about that for an hour. Sure. Like you'll, you'll for an hour. For yeah. No they had a lot of famous players. Now they have a lot of not famous players. Yeah, the truth hurts. Okay. Generally, teams are good when people give the players hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, and then you get good players. Los Angeles usually has a lot of money, so they give the players a lot of money. Los Angeles, you heard of Los Angeles? Please money? What? Basketball players get paid money? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That's amazing, isn't it? Okay. Now in this position, there's two common moves, and I've played both of them. Okay, I've played e3, and then when I play e3, my bishop's protecting my pawn. However, then this bishop starts crying because he can't move out so much. The other move, which is probably more common, is bishop g5. That's what I did. Now, let's see who the smartest in the class is. Mm. What's this bishop doing to this knight? What's that called? A pin? It is called a pin. What kind of pin? A skewer? I, I give you, I, I'll give you two choices. Skewer? Can I give you two choices? What? Relative and absolute. Absolute. Absolutely not correct. Relative. Relative, yeah. Absolute means it's illegal. So that would be illegal, but it's not illegal. It's just terrible. Relative is terrible. For example, do you have a brother or sister? No. Oh, the joke didn't work out well. Pretend you did. They would be terrible, right? Yeah. Yeah. So relative is terrible. Absolute is illegal. When you go to the bar, do you order absolute vodka? Is that what you do? Ew. Say no. No. You know why? It's illegal. Yeah. So absolute is illegal, relative is terrible. If you move your knight and lose your queen, that's terrible. That's so terrible. So that's a relative pin. Because you okay. lose your queen and move your king in the king. Oh, and you move your king. That's even worse than losing your queen, right? Okay, right, Batman? Yeah, he agrees. Okay, so my opponent didn't play one of the most common moves. He played like the third most common move. H6 attacking my bishop or taking my pawn. But he played knight bd7. He developed his knight. Developing your knight is good. If you're taking notes, I'll let you write that down. Okay, now, you guys aren't grandmasters, right? This is the under 1,000 class. So if you're grandmasters, you've lost the step. And when you're a grandmaster, you can move your bishop through your pawns, right? That is weird. Right? No, you can't. You can't. You're not well, I'm a grandmaster. You don't have a teleporter. Oh, okay. Well, I still want to move my bishop, so I wonder what I did. Hold on. See, this is why I have a beard. Mm. So how did I get my bishop out? What did I do? Yeah, I moved a pawn. So I played e3. Now I can move my bishop out. 
Yes, I'm great. Now, there's a city in Pennsylvania. There's actually two cities in Pennsylvania that have chess openings named after them. Isn't that weird? That's just weird. Yeah. One is called the Cambridge Springs. And that's because Springs? That's Cambridge Springs. Season. Now, there was a chess tournament in Cambridge Springs over 100 years ago, and they played this opening a lot, so they called it the Cambridge Springs. This move unpins and pins. What's an unpin? It's the opposite of a pin. Okay, oh, yeah. so we agreed earlier that this was pinning this to this. Do we agree on that? Yes. So if black moves the queen away, that knight's not pinned anymore. Bye-bye. Right. However, this knight is pinned. So black unpins and pins white's knight. That's called the Cambridge Springs. And this opening was very common between 1900 and 1920. Okay. And then they play it sometimes now, but not as much. Okay. And I faced that several times. My opponent played D takes C4. This is a mistake. However, this is my opponent's first tournament, so give him a break. Normally, when you take this pawn, you want white to move his bishop and then move his bishop again when he takes it. So, for example, in a game I'm going to show in another class, not this class, my opponent played here, I played here, and then he took. And then I took, so I moved my bishop twice. Usually, when they take the pawn on c4, they let you move your bishop first, so you have to waste time taking it. You move it twice. My opponent just took right now, and I was like, okay, great. Now, that move is very strange, so we're going to explain it, because this is a chess class. Why did Black take that pawn and give his center pawn away for a side pawn? The reason is, this bishop is very suspicious. See that bishop? Yeah. That bishop's not moving too much, is it? Suspiciously. Yeah, that bishop. So if these pawns disappear, see these pawns that I highlighted? If they disappear, then the bishop can move everywhere. But if they never move, that bishop's not going to do very much. So Black had a long plan. He didn't make up the plan. It's been played before. He took, and then he played the move b5, attacking my bishop. And when my bishop moves away, he wants to put his bishop here, and then move his pawn, and then his bishop is great. That's the plan. In fact, if you go to one of my classes that's not this one, I, that happened. My opponent did that. Okay? And a lot of people do that. Did this guy do that? No, he didn't get a chance to. He didn't play so good. Okay, he played bishop e7, which is a weird move. The reason it's weird is he just did all this stuff, and then he just said, ah, okay, forget about that. Okay, so what he should do, he should move his bishop out, and then he should try to move these pawns up so his bishop is great. Instead, he played here, so his bishop still isn't too good. Now, in chess, there's three possibilities. You have more pieces out, your opponent has more pieces out, or it's the same. Who has more minor pieces out, white or black? Um, white. You know, white has four minor pieces out, right? And black has three. And it's my move. Okay? So I could do nothing and move around doing nothing, then he would catch up, right? Or I could attack. And then he's like, hey, stop attacking me. My pieces are not yet. Okay? And then I would call the director and say, he's talking during the game. And the director would rule in my favor. You know why? I'm the director. <laughs> yeah, truth hurts. Yeah. Okay, so if you wanted to punish your opponent and move forward with white, what move would you make? Yeah. Um, the elephant? The elephant? You mean these guys? No. Those aren't elephants? Don't tell the Russian guys that. Which one's the elephant? This? No. This? No. Wow, which, one, which one's the elephants? I'm getting confused it's here. Pawn. These guys? No. This? Is it a rook? Yes. The rook is the elephant? Okay. We call that a rook. Yeah. Well, I can't move my rook out. Ah. I could move this rook here. That's actually a good move. I like that move. Okay, because my rook goes to the open line. Your move is very good. Might be better than my move. 95. Okay. 95 is aggressive. I Now, I discussed with you earlier in class that when these pawns are traded, which they were, White has more center pawns. I have two pawns in the center, and he has one. 
because I took his center pawn. Well, he gave it to me. How can I move forward in the center? Hooray! E4? E4. Bam! That's what I did. Okay, and he played A6. A6 is a funny move, but it's actually easy to understand. He wants to play C5, but that gives this pawn away. So he played A6, and now he can play C5 attacking my center. The reason he can't play C5 is actually very funny. It's my move. If it was his move, he'd play C5 attacking my center. But it's not his move. So I attacked his knight. I'm moving forward attacking him because I have more pieces out than he does. Okay, and he moved his knight, obviously. You Richard? Exactly. So you see how his knight's attacked? So he moved it. Where did he move it? Um, I think he moved it to, um, 8-5. G4, it's an option. Boy, you guys are moving on the side of the board. He moved in the center of the board. D5? He moved to D5. Yeah. Probably wow. your moves are just as good. But he wants to play in the center. Now this is the kind of move that's easy for a grandmaster, but hard for you guys. Okay? Now, we're going to discuss something very complicated and yet very simple. Chess is like that. All of his pawns that he moved are on white squares. And even the pawns he didn't move. So he has seven pawns and six of them are on white squares. You agree? Okay. That means... If I move my pieces, where should I put them so his pawns can't take them? The white squares or the dark squares? The dark squares. Yeah, if I go to the dark squares, his pawns can't take me. Now, unfortunately for me, he has a dark squared bishop. So if I go to the dark squares, his bishop might take me. But we're going to trade those bishops, right? What dark, squares, what dark square in black's territory looks nice and juicy? Which of these squares looks really good for me to put something? Hmm. Oh, you forget one more. That one. Let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of dark squares in here, right? One of those dark squares, I can put one of my pieces. It's one he can't defend with pawns anymore. The answer is this one. That's a nice square. What should I put there? Should I put a rook there, a bishop, a queen? A knight. A knight, yeah. So let's cheat. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Knight here. Check. Well, that's a good move, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's a good move. He doesn't like that move. Yeah. Okay, can I play knight there right now? No. no. I can, but you can't because you're not grandmasters. <laughs> okay, so what move did I play? Because I sort of gave away the answer. There's two moves to get there. Knight e4. Yeah, so I played knight e4. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to put you in check. Okay, so if I had the black pieces, maybe I would castle. Has anybody ever castled before? Yeah, I have. Yeah, have you? No? No. Watch, watch them castle. Watch this. Bam! You ever heard of castling? Yeah, now you have. Okay, castling is the only move in chess where you move two pieces at the same time. You move your king and your rook. Okay? You're, and that way your king is safe. That's what he should have done. Okay? Now, he did something that I do when I play Go, but I have a good reason. I don't know how to play Go. Okay. This guy won all of his games, so he doesn't have a good excuse. He attacked my bishop. He played h6. Notice that he's attacking my bishop. Right? Yeah, we already noticed that. Yeah, so if I don't do anything, he'll take my bishop. Now, when I play Go, and I've only played twice in my life, I didn't know the rules, and it was before you were all born. Whenever my opponent did something, I would look at it, and then I would go there too. Right? Okay, so let's say there's a magician over there, and he's going to do stuff, but you don't see him, and I start doing this. And you're looking at me, right? Yeah. Then he's doing all that stuff you don't see. Hmm. Right? Okay, in chess you can do that too. The guy makes a move, and you're like, ooh. When it turns out you have checkmate over there, but you're just staring at his move. So my opponent... He's like, I'm attacking your bishop. Rawr. I don't care about that. I want to play knight d6. So I play knight d6. Check. Because he can't take my bishop. He's in check. Notice he's in check. Now we're going to ask a very difficult question. How many possible moves does black have? Um, take the knight. 
Or um, run castle. I mean, run away. Right, castle is uh, too difficult for this class. Is castle legal? Can you do that? No. No. No, you're not allowed to. In fact, if I try to castle, it won't let me. Now that kid's confused. He's like, you just told me about castling. Now you told me he can't castle. Castling. castling has a lot of rules. Because in chess we like rules. How many? One million? At least. And one of the rules is, if your king is in check, you can't castle. Or if something's blocked. Do you know what check is? Yeah. Okay. So, let's vote. There's five of you, so there, it can't be a tie. There has to be three to two or something. He or can one, move his king. Or one to five. Or he yeah. could take the knight. Which move is better? Take the knight. Okay, he votes for take the knight. Move the king. He votes move the king. Take the knight. 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 Four to one. They're all against you. Uh, sorry. He's still pretty confident, though. Yeah. So my opponent moved his king. Let's, let, that's what he said, that tall guy. Let's analyze your move. Let's analyze it, okay? He takes the knight. Take now the what queen. do I do? I take the queen. Yeah, now I take the queen. Right. Oh. Now you want to change your vote. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my opponent didn't want to lose his queen. By the way, we have a name for this. We've only talked about it twice. Pin. What kind of pin? Um, a skewer? So relative pin, because relatives are bad. We talked about that. Yeah. Okay, so king f8. Okay, and then now my bishop really is attacked. So, okay, we traded bishops. Okay, now you may have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice, nobody's ahead. Everything's the same. Look at the engine. We, no, no, what I mean is nobody has more pieces. We have the same amount of kings, the same amount of queens, the same amount of rooks, Bishops, knights, and pawns. Everything's the same. If I turn the engine on, it says white's winning. Because I can castle and he can't. And my bishop can go to 100 trillion squares and his bishop is terrible. Boo! And my knight is the greatest knight ever. Look at that knight. Yay! Okay. Now, in this position, if you look at all of the pawns, all of them, all of them, which black pawn is not protected? Nothing's protecting it. Um. There's only one of them. C6. C6? Are you sure? Did you hear what he said correctly? So yeah. Yeah, yeah. you did. No, you did. Yeah. C6. If I take that pawn, it's free. Can I take that pawn now? No. I wish I could take that pawn. Maybe if I cry, he'll let me take it. <laughs> How can I attack that pawn? How can I move something and attack that c6 pawn? I'll move the queen to just two places. The queen can yeah, I could move my queen here or here. Uh -huh. Okay, what else could I do? Um, Somebody suggested earlier, you did. You said move the elephant. Rawr. Yeah, you can move the rook to c1. Yeah, that's what he wanted to move the elephant. That's right. I played rook to c1. Elephant, yeah, now I'm going to take his pawn. I like taking his pawn. It's just a pawn even. Yeah, that's better than nothing. It's a pawn. So what did he do about that? I thought he couldn't do anything about it, but he actually found a way to protect it. No it's wonder he won all his games. You can block it too. You can block it too, though. It'll just be terrible. Right. He didn't want to do that. He didn't want to give his knight away. If he defends it with his bishop, then I take his bishop. Bam. Yeah. Um, move the pawn up to um, c5. If he does that, I take it. Yay, hooray for me. And then the knight takes it. Yeah, careful. Careful. Oh, yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah. So I thought I was winning a pawn. In fact, the computer says he should let me take it. Somebody was like, that's a pawn, who cares? He played knight b4. See how his knight protects his pawn? And protects a bishop. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So if I take his pawn... He'll take my rook, and then I'll cry. Okay. Well, so I... Just one good thing about it. One, he takes a pawn, attacks the rook, and two, he takes the bishop for no reason. Well, my bishop's protected. In fact, that did happen. I attacked his knight, he took my bishop, and I took his knight. Yay! Okay, now he made the worst move ever. In he played way. for tricks, but tricks are for kids. Watch this trick he played. 
didn't work. He tried to remove the defender. And I'll tell you what I mean, because it's a chess class. He wants to take my knight, but I take his queen. Did he take my knight? No. He said, hmm, if that guy's pawn was in here, then I could take the knight. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So he thought he would trick me and play knight f6. And he thought, I take his knight, he takes my knight. Well, that's fair. And he said, if I don't take his knight, his knight's going to go in the middle. So he thought, yay, knight f6, I'm a genius. Then when I made my next move, he was visibly upset. He was like, oh, shaking his head. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. I made a move and he was like, ah. Oh. Okay. Well, I want to take his knight, but I don't want him to take my knight. So what did I do? He took his knight. What? Then he takes my knight. We just discussed that. No, the pawn takes the F6 knight. That's what we just discussed. If I take his knight, he takes my knight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I want to take his knight and not take my knight. I have a question for an elephant man. Yeah. Can this knight take anything? See this knight? Can yes, it take anything? He, yes, he can take the bishop. What's a bishop? What? You know, in Russian, your favorite language, an a, a bishop is an elephant. Huh. Yeah? Yeah? No. Yeah? Well, he's saying no, but it's yeah. I'm not, he's, like, he's like, no. The elephants go on a straight line, so... Uh, okay. So watch what I did. Do you know how the knight moves? Yeah, I took his bishop with my knight, as suggested. See how I did that? Okay, then he took my knight. And then I took his knight. And he can't take my knight anymore because it's not there. Was that good for white or good for black? Black. I mean, wait, both. Both? Because they both took each other's knights. Yeah, but I took his bishop. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I took two pieces and he took one. Two's more than one. Let's, he took yeah. the pawn too? Yeah, he took my pawn. All right, so now we're going to vote. I White's winning, black's winning, or it's an equal position? White's winning. White's winning. He, he doesn't know? White. White. White is winning. White. White. Black. Ah, oh, he's always against the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> White's winning because white has a knight and black doesn't. It's good to have a knight, right? Yeah, because you can make forks and pins. And yeah, well, I have a knight and he doesn't. Okay. It's a, it's a Hold knight. on, i got to do something here. Very important. Uh, push that button. What button? I don't know. It was a button. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it didn't work. Hold on a second. Uh, I press the invisible button. Ah, oh, this didn't work good. Uh, hold on. He's a bad mohawk. I have a bad mohawk? I don't like, I don't like I his mohawk. I agree that I have a bad mohawk, because I don't have a mohawk. So he's right. No, look at his mohawk. That camera's mohawk is bad. I don't like his mohawk. Oh, this isn't good. Mm. Oh, you're talking about the, the you're talking about the, the uh, what do you call it? Mohawk? You're talking about that. You're talking about the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. No, the microphone does have a bad mohawk. I agree. People at home are very confused. They were confused anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and then push done. When and you stop pushing buttons, it's just a button. What happened? It's just a button. Yeah. Why are you yelling? Are you mad at something? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Who gets the prize for the quietest? Okay. I, I blame society. And then, let's see. 226, does that make sense? Perfect. Perfect, 226. Okay, now if it doesn't work, I'll have to break all the tables. Okay, it worked. Okay, now, we were just discussing this, me and you. Now it's going to happen. Is that a good idea? What were we discussing before? Something he never heard of. Um, good night at five next. Do you remember? Castling. Castling, yeah. So I castled so you would know what it is. Watch. Bam. Okay, castling is good. What vitamin does it have? 
Vitamin C for castling. Then your king is safe and your rook gets out. Okay, my opponent played a move I don't understand. Queen e7. I don't know why he did that. Okay, now, I have a knight and he doesn't have a knight. Yeah? So I move my knight. Rawr! Did I go here? Did I go here? No. Here? How about all the way back? Take my own king? Yeah. No. So I played knight e5. Now I have a threat. Okay? And this is something you have to do when you're playing chess. You have to actually count. So we're going to count. No kicking. See this pawn here? How many times is white attacking that pawn? Once. Two. two. Huh? Oh, yeah, two. So two, two, two. I got one and then two. How many times is black protecting the pawn? One. One. You got one. And plus, I would take up the knight first. Okay, well, it's his turn. Okay, so he was like, hmm, I don't want to lose my pawn. Defend it. So he defended it. Queen d6. Okay, now, in every class, I talk about this, but we haven't talked about it yet, because it didn't happen, and now it happened. It's something you never heard of. It's not chopsticks, it's not a spoon, and it's not a knife. It's a fork. It's a fork. Okay, fork in chess... <laughs> is when you attack two or more things. A fork? Okay. Now, fork. now in this one. position, and in all positions in chess, there's something that I find very important. If you find it important, you'll be a grandmaster too. I know see a lot of the good moves, but just a pawn's getting rid of it. Uh, right. Okay. So, what I find important is when something is attacking something, and I'm going to show you all the examples. However, the things that are being attacked are also protected. So, should I take this pawn and let him take my queen? No way! No. Should I take this pawn and let him take my knight? Yeah. No. no. Should I, he take this pawn and I take his queen? Yeah. No. And so forth. So sometimes things are attacked and defended. In this position, who are you pointing at? Don't do that. In this position, this guy's attacked twice, and this guy's attacked once. I have a move where I attack both of them again with something else. How do I attack both of these guys with something else? Queen f3. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Queen f3. Bam. Now, this guy's attacked three times, right? And this guy's attacked twice. Now, if you came to my chess tournament and you left your gold watch for $5,000 and you left your pen, which you stole, that cost one cent, one of them is more important. Yeah. The $5,000 Unclear. Watch. Okay. Now, Therefore, you have to make a decision. You decided the watch was more important. You have to decide which one's more important. The watch. The, of, of the pawns that I highlighted that I'm attacking, which one's more important? The watch. The 5,000 gold watch. F7. F7. Okay. The reason F7 is more important is that this is checkmate. Yippee, I knew it. Yeah. So if he says, oh, I'm going to save my pawn. Then I checkmate him. That's probably the wrong thing to save. Okay. Also, I can prove it's checkmate without even doing any work. There's another one called knight um, f7 that can poke the queen and the rook. You're suggesting a move that's not checkmate? But it takes queen, rook, queen, rook, or... Yeah. If you checkmate. Would, would you prefer to do that or checkmate? I prefer checkmate. Yeah. It's okay. Turn. So now, I know it's checkmate because when I look over here at the moves, there's this little weird symbol. It looks like a hashtag, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that's checkmate. The computer says it's checkmate, so it's checkmate. So, so if he takes my queen, then his, he can't do that because it's but, protected. But, okay. Now my opponent, for some reason, 
He didn't want to get checkmated. There's only one way the king can war. Okay, so in this position, white, black has a lot of ways not to get checkmated. He chose one of the worst. Yeah. What happened? It says that's one of the worst. Wow. Harsh. Phone's mad. All right, so we're going to have the audience, they're going to suggest a lot of moves that stop the checkmate. I don't care if it's a good move. I want you to stop checkmate. Suggest a move for black where I don't checkmate you. If you can't stop checkmate, you're not going to beat anybody. They're going to checkmate you. So somebody suggest a move for black. Um. Rook C7. Rook C7. Okay, good. Much better than what he did. Good. What else? Queen F6 is the worst. F6 isn't the worst. What he did was much worse. Queen E7. Uh, F6 is... Okay, that stops me. Queen, queen E7 takes, stops me. Queen takes E5. Queen takes E5. Queen takes E5 is about the same as what he did. About the same. Yeah. It's not, I don't know which is worse. Close. I think Queen E5 is worse. Well, you don't know what he did. Sorry. Okay, so this stops me. This stops me. This stop. This is the moves that we got. Pawn. You put the pawn forward. Oh, yeah. Sure. We, okay. Also, you could go queen c7, f5. Yeah. Another way to stop me is to run away with your king. He takes this and you keep running. So, like so here, and, and then you just keep running with your king. He's running, he's running you could like, move your king in a circle. He's running okay. in the lip. Now, he chose the worst way. Before I show you what he did, I want to show you a good move against your move. That's very tricky. Rook c7. Is that what he did? No. Rook c seven was suggested by the audience. Okay, now another term we haven't talked about, because it's pretty hard for this class, is called overworked. So let's say that young man there, he wants to make more money. So you get a job as a security guard at the bank. And now I'm not going to your bank because you're a security guard. You're scary, right? It's not too scary. Anyway. Then another bank calls you and says, can you work at our bank too? And you're like, sure, I want two paychecks, right? Can you go to both banks at the same time? I don't think so. Maybe you need a clone. Okay, so now you're overworked. You got two jobs, they want you there at the same time. You can't do it. If he plays rook c7, his rook is like your security guard. He's defending mate, and he's also defending c6. How does he defend both of them? I don't know. So White says, you can't defend both of them, and goes here. You and now if you take the Rook, you get checkmated. Because your Rook can't defend both of them. If you take with a Queen, I take your Queen. So if he had played Rook C7, I would have played Rook C6, and he would have cried. Right? Now, he has to move his Queen away. Either to E7 or D8 to protect his Rook. Okay. Now, I have another threat I didn't tell you about, because I'm mean. Knight g6. Knight g6. So if I play knight g6, I'm attacking his king and his rook. What's that called? Fork. Four. Four. And if he makes a random move, and I decide not to mate him, because I'm a nice guy, and I fork his king and rook, he can't take my knight. Now, this is your chance, Alex. What kind of pin is this? Um, uh... Skewer? It's never a skewer. You made that up. Skewer is something else. There's two kinds of pins. The vodka pin. And the pin. And the, and the relative pin. So this is an absolute pin. I can't take the knight. The computer won't let me. Ugh. I keep trying to. Because I'll be in check. Okay. Now, my opponent, he made a really bad move because he stopped checkmate. But he made that fork even better. It was a nice guy. He played queen e7. Nice. <laughs> and, he, and he said, if you checkmate me, I'll take your queen. Yeah. And I said, no talking. And then I played what's called, it's called a family fork. Oh, Jesus. That's what it's called. Some yeah. folks are mean. Yeah. Like, almost... So I played knight g6, and then he wasn't very happy. What about a city? Maybe he wasn't rooting for me. What about, what about a city fork? That's later. That's advanced class. Now, I'm attacking his king, his rook, and his queen. Although, to be honest, I don't really care about the rook. Can he take my knight? No, because he'll be in check. Ouch! 
Right. So now, if I turn the engine on, my computer will blow up. So the engine tells you who's winning. Plus one is a pawn. Plus two is two pawns. How about plus three? That's the three. Let's see what the let's see what the engine says. It says plus twelve, plus twenty five. So it, it like it, plus mate and fourteen. So it prefers white, right? Okay. Now, you kids, especially you kids, and you're a kid too. Black did something I never want you guys to do, but that's what he did. What do I never want you to do? I'll move the king to. I never want you to move the king. Resign. He gave up. He said, I give up, so I won. Yay. Now, when grandmasters play and masters and professional players, it's very rare there's a checkmate. Before checkmate, somebody gives up. Do you ever watch sports on television, ever? Oh, I do. What I sports do you watch? NFL and... When you watch the NFL, does the other team say, oh, we're down 30 points, we give up? No. No. Not only do they not do that, they're not allowed to do that. If they said, well, we're going to lose anyway, we're just going to leave, then they would get in a lot of trouble. They can't do that. In chess, you're allowed to do that, but don't do that. But you're allowed to, but don't do that. Do a rematch. So when grandmasters play, we don't want to get checkmated, so we give up before that happens. So my opponent knew it was 100% he would lose. He forgot that I could die of a heart attack. He forgot. So it was only like 99% or 50%. Okay. So he gave up. So I win. In fact, I played five games in that tournament. One of my opponents, I checkmated him. The other four, they gave up. They said, well, you're going to win. I give up. But one of them, he didn't give up. So I mated him. And I won. <laughs> Let me, can I ask you a question? Is it better to checkmate somebody or they give up? Which do you get more points for? Checkmate. 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 Neither. Neither. Same. And you can break the tie. Checkmate. Okay, so it's three to two. All three kids said checkmate is better than when they give up. It's more fun. So if I'm playing in a chess tournament and I write down the result of the game, like who won the game, if I checkmate them, I write that I won, right? If they give up, what do I write? That I won. So it's the same. Yeah. Right. So if I checkmate you or you give up, I win. And vice versa, although that never happens in the party. Okay, so here he gave up, so I win. Now, if you're playing in a tournament, you might get hungry, and you want to go eat. So this guy's like, oh, I'm down a queen, I can resign and go eat. Otherwise, we keep playing and he can't eat. So I have a funny story about that. The previous tournament, about a week ago, the guy had the longest game of the round. His game never ended, then it ended. And then the next round started in 10 minutes, so he couldn't eat. And he said, rawr, I want to eat, but the game starts in 10 minutes. Then he played the next game, and his game was the longest game of the round again. So that guy, he couldn't eat for like seven hours. So I gave him a copy of my book, Eat Like a Grandmaster. Do you have that book? Eat like a No? You do? Okay, good answer. All right, you're confusing even me. Okay, so that was my easiest game. But we're going to do a Varakobian, and we're going to go back and see what he did wrong. In my opinion, him taking that pawn was wrong. When he did that, he took this pawn. He shouldn't have done that. Okay. And then in this position, he made a second mistake. He attacked my bishop. He should castle. Okay, that's what he should do. Now, as a chess teacher, and this is the easiest class, you should always castle. Then your king is good and your rook gets in the game. He didn't castle, and I did castle, so I won. Anecdotal evidence, the best kind of evidence, right? Okay, he nodded. Okay, what else did he do wrong? In this position, here, right here, everybody's happy. And he played knight f6, and then I took all of his pieces. Ow! And then I hurt my arm. When the game ended, I went to my wife at the front desk, and I said, I have to go to urgent care because I need to get a bandage because I took all his pieces and hurt my arm. Right? You see? Hurt his arm too. Okay. So now watch this. Pay attention. I took his bishop, and then I took his knight. So I took two pieces, and he took a knight and a pawn. What's worth more, a bishop and a knight or a knight and a pawn? Five to six, um, bishop and a knight. 
bishop and a knight. So white's winning. If I turn the engine on, it says white's winning. It says raw R plus five. If I go to the beginning of the game on move one, turn the engine on, it says equal. Nobody's winning, right? But then when I take all of his pieces, then it says I'm winning. Then in this position, <clears throat> when I'm threatening checkmate, it's, remember you guys were suggesting moves here? One of you suggested to move the pawn, one said rook c7, I said king g8, move the king away. That's what that computer says. The computer has a light. When the light turns red, that means you made a bad move. So, do bad. so when I play queen e7, which is what he played, the light turns red. Now, what's the number one move? What does it say? Number one. See, there's one, two, Nine three. Knight g6 is number one. So I play number one. Yay. If you play number one every move, they accuse you of cheating. So you got to be careful if you're cheating. You can't cheat too much. Yeah. It's funny. It's not too funny. Okay. So I won. Hooray. I don't think my opponent played very well, but that guy beat everybody. So what do I know? All right. So that was my, that was my fourth game. You. You were just stretching? No. Okay. Now I have a puzzle. We have an easy puzzle because this is the easy class. If you have the hard puzzle, you would all cry. Some of those puzzles are hard. I can't solve them. So if you guys solve them, I won't know if you're right. Okay. So this is the easy made in two. And I'm going to flip the board so you're less confused. Whose turn is it? Who's going to win, white or black? White. White. White's going to win. Now, most of you would win, but it would take you, you know, 5, 10, 15 moves. This is a puzzle because white can win in two moves. Now, when you're winning, you want to win in one move or two moves, so then the game's over, right? One move? Well, you'd like to. You just can't win in one move. But you can win in two moves. In this position, white has a two-move checkmate. That means white makes a move, and then black makes a move, and then white checkmates him. Mm -hmm. Now, is it easy? No, it's a puzzle. If it was easy, then it wouldn't be a puzzle, even though it says easy right there. If you were a grandmaster, this would be easy. If you've never played chess before, this is impossible, right? So it's a puzzle and, you know, and so forth, right? I know. Yeah. You guys know the answer, you kids? I know what. You guys are kids. I know what it is. Why, did somebody tell you? I did. Good. I know the answer. Both the king to ease. E6? If you move the king to E6, whose turn is it after that? Black. And then black's going to move his king. And then move the rook to B8. That's not going to be checkmate, right? Move the king to E6, move the king somewhere. That's not checkmate, is it? If you could move the king to E6 and then move your rook to the back and make two moves in a row, then you'd be all set. But you can't do that. I can do it because I'm a grandmaster. But you guys can't do it. Try again. Trying is the first step to failure, right? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a secret. You ready for the secret? You want these kings lined up. If you line them up, the guy moves away. If you line them up, he moves away. If you line them up, he moves away. So guess what? You want black to line up the kings, and then you mate him. So if I go here... And you line up the kings, I checkmate you. Hooray for me. But you're not going to line up the kings unless I make you line up the kings. So in this position, black has three legal moves. The red one, that's the one that lines up the kings. So you have to make a move where those moves are possible. And then you solved it. Uh, rook to F5. Rook to F5. Can black go here now? No. Can black go here? No. Now, now if I had black, I would go here. <laughs> right? Yeah, I will. I'm a grandmaster. <laughs> I've done that before. He can't tell part of the screen and say, see you later. No, but I can because grandmaster. You know the teleporter patch, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now what move does black play? D8. King D8 and then checkmate. And I know it's checkmate because the computer said so. That's how I know. Now, what's funny about this is many, 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 many years ago, 
I showed this puzzle to a kid, and he's, and, and he's like, here, and I'm like, right. And then I took this position on a real board, and I turned the board 90 degrees. I didn't change the position, I just turned the board, and he's like, I can't solve it. <laughs> but I said, I, I didn't change the position. So you could do it on the side of the board, but I did it on the back, so you guys were less confused. There's way too many minis. What? No, there weren't enough, actually. Huh? Okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about so you're less confused. Oh, maybe you'll be more confused. I don't know. So a new position set up. And I'll give you the same position, but I'll move it on the side. So I just took the chessboard and I turned it 90 degrees. That um, position is the same position I just showed you. If you turn your head, you'll see it. You go, oh, that's the same position. Now, what's the winning move? A move. I'll move the rook to um, h7. Rook to h7? Then I, whoops. Rook to h7. Man, I can't do it. I'm too stupid. And then I go here. Uh, rook to d3. Rook to d3. That's not a checkmate at all. It's not even it's checkmate. checkmate. Yeah, it's a two move checkmate like the last puzzle. It is the last puzzle. I didn't do anything. <laughs> then he goes here, right? Yeah. Done, done. And then me. So what I did was, I turned it 90 degrees, and he said, I give up, and I showed him. Then I turned it 90 degrees again, so the mate was over here, and then he solved it immediately. Then I turned it 90 degrees again, and he's like, I don't know how to solve it. And his dad was on the floor laughing. Yeah. His dad was not as good at chess as he was, but he saw I just turned the board. I didn't know. And this is actually interesting about chess. When there's no pawns on the board, are there pawns on the board? No. When there's no pawns on the board, Chess is a perfect square. You can turn the board. That doesn't do anything. There's pawns on the board. You can't do that because pawns only move one way. Yeah. So when there's no pawns on the board and they want to solve chess, it's very easy. When there's pawns on the board, then it's hard. Then chess is hard and everybody cries. Yeah. Okay. So that was the easy puzzle. The hard puzzles would take you hours to solve, which I approve of because... You don't know. Pay by the hour. You get paid by the hour. That's right. So it takes you out. It's funny. About two weeks ago, the guy was here because our alarm wasn't working. And, and we were like, I said something like, I hope this is easy to fix. And he said, I don't really mind. I get paid by the hour. And I was like, what? He stole my line. So then I sued him. We're in court now. He can't say that. That's my line. Yeah, he actually said he gets paid by the hour. And I was like, what? You're stealing my line. Okay. And then the alarm went off because he stole my line. There's an alarm for that. Yeah. Okay, you guys did well, although none of you played in my tournament yesterday. I did. You played yesterday? Okay. I was directing the tournament. I didn't see you there. But I was in the other tournaments you were in. Didn't. Well, it's true. Yeah. So thank you for coming to class, and don't forget to go to our tournaments. Rawr. We have another class starting in 30 minutes that's slightly harder than this one. Slightly. And then they get harder and harder until I sit in the audience and somebody teaches it. Yeah, right? Good. And you may have learned nothing today, but he learned what castling was. Good job. If you castle every game, nobody will beat you, except the guys who beat you. Right? That doesn't make sense. Could somebody explain to him why castling is good? Why do you castle? Because it protects your king. It makes your king better, and it makes your rook get out of the corner. And those pawns are... You have all those pawns in front of your king. Nobody will ever meet you. Well, maybe. If you want a castle, you can't move your king or your rook. Then you can castle. And there's nothing between them. And then if you ever play 960, I quit. 960 is too hard to castle. There are some checkmates called, um, you, um, long versus mates where you can't go anywhere and your pieces are blocking you. You mean smothered mate? Yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> you ever heard of smothered mate? That's where you're getting mated because your own pieces are blocking you. I knew it! You can't take your, you can't take your own pieces, can you? That would just be weird. Right? So your own pieces are making your king not move. I actually, I have, agree I actually have an analogy for that, which is for the adults. I know what okay? I There's know a, a game you never heard of called football. You talked about it earlier in class. Now, I'm from Detroit originally. We had a running back named Barry Sanders. Very famous, right? Okay. Barry Sanders, his one problem was his own men. Like you're trying to run, and usually the other team is trying to tackle you. And then your men are blocking them so that they don't tackle you. But he would run into his own men, because they were always getting in his way. 
Because usually when you run, you already know which way you're going to run. He didn't know that. He would be like, hmm. That he would go all every direction. Then he'd run to his own guys. Yeah, that happened a lot with him. That was funny. Yeah. Except when it didn't happen, they scored a touchdown. Okay. And then he retired. <laughs> and now we're no good anymore. Also, we sure won last week against the Falcons. Okay, class dismissed.